Good morning, guys. <clears throat> well, I'm hitting a couple themes, but the main one is <clears throat> when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. But it, the first part of it is about those that fear him. We're all going to, there's going to be fear and trembling. But it's not to be scared, guys. It's to respect the authority. Do you feel like you're in a flood right now, guys? The enemy's trying to wear us out. Nothing to do with the election, guys. A little, but very, very little. It has to do with God's purpose and his will. In Revelation, the birth of the man-child and the woman. What did the enemy do? Try to swallow her up with a flood, but the Lord opened up the earth and took it away, swallowed it up. That standard is righteousness, guys. These are the scriptures that was in Isaiah 59, 19, but read all of Isaiah 59, 19. But a couple days ago, I was gonna put out this message and the Lord highlighted 2 Peter 1, 1 through 8. But then he said all of it. So I, just, I, kept, I kept forgetting to read it. For several days. I knew it was there and I just never couldn't get to it. For various different reasons. <coughs> when I got to it, it's about him revealing himself to us. A lot of it is. Read it. But it's part of the flood. He's going to expose things, but it's not like we think, guys. It goes along with this message that I've had out a long time about the woman caught in adultery. And, and pick one. Pick a sin. That just happens to be one of them. Plenty of them. But the world wanted to kill her, stone her, beat her to death, caught, red-handed. Kind of like what everybody's saying about all this election. Of course, there was plenty of deceitful fraud, but there was sin involved in it, guys. Deceitful sin it wasn't just the lies that they portrayed. It was what was behind the lies. But... All that stuff that the world wanted to do to expose her and then kill her. The violence, the death. Because that's what the enemy is, seek, kill, and destroy. What did Jesus do? He pretty much ignored him. But he did speak. He said, hey, who amongst you has no sin? Throw the first stone. Everybody had to tuck their tail and run. Part of the fear of the Lord, they realized, man, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. Then he looked up and he said, well, where is everybody? Your accusers. I don't accuse you either. Go and sin no more, though. He cleansed her. But exposure is to set people free. All this mess that's coming up, I'm not trying to politicize it with this election, whether you, whoever you voted for. Let's just leave it at that. It's all going to come to light. But you know what? It doesn't, it, it, it matters, but it doesn't anymore because even if everything changes, I'm not going to believe it. There's just too much that went on, God, but it was all related to sin, it was power and sin and control. Why do we? Why are we letting a handful of people, or maybe a thousand or whatever, power and greed and control? But it's sin that's behind it, and the sin is the enemy, because he wants to slime. He wants to come in like a flood. You can bury us with stuff. <clears throat> Guys, I got booted off of YouTube for this. I'm not going to share the title.
because I don't want to get booted off again. <clears throat> but I came from a big hospital in Dallas. It's not a war zone, guys. Not anywhere close to what they're saying. It's had to go down there off and on over an eight day period. Huge hospital. Whole big old buildings just dedicated just to cancer and just different various different diseases. And many, many buildings are so big it was there three hours one day and different buildings and just long story, but it's not anywhere near the level that they weaponized. This and why did they do that so they could usher in all this other garbage? And the main thrust behind it is the abortion and the sexual perversion of, of, of every devious kind of way you can think of from the gay rights movement to the pedophilism to the just everybody has rights, but, but Christians now. Shut up, wear a mask, lock yourself up, lock lock yourself down, shut up. Don't even sing in church. What? What's wrong with you people? But this is the real deal, guys. I have lived this, walked through this, prayed through this. Many of y'all have too. This is not a game, guys. It's not me getting on a soapbox, personal experience with Jesus. I would walk with him. And many of y'all got got it. Many of y'all I'm um, taken from a former pastor where we used to go to church. He said they're probably just pre Christians. We don't know where people are on their journey, guys. And sometimes it's kind of messy and ugly. Most of the time it is. I was talking to one really good friend of mine. I was like where would you have been if people would have discounted you? Where would we all, any of us be if somebody wouldn't have reached for us when we were deep in sin? I'm not talking about compromise, guys. It's not good either. <clears throat> I'm not talking about everybody's included, and it's just going to be this Psalms, you know, lay, lay us down green pastures. Of course that's going to happen, but it's not for everybody. You can't bring your sin into this. There's got to be a standard, that standard of holiness, of righteousness, purity with God. And you know where you're going to get it? And that's part of the first, first, second Peter 1. Is in your direction from God. You want direction from God? Get you, get you behind up with me at 5 in the morning and seek Him. The reason why five is time time and season of grace for one, but it's quiet. There's no distractions. There's none of this. That's why my message is wizards that peep and mutter. Read it. It's in Isaiah. Look at my YouTube on that. You know when that message came out? When I heard that message? 1982. What'd your cell phone look like back then? Most people didn't have one. CD compact discs weren't even invented. It was cassettes. I don't even think YouTube existed or Facebook. And this preacher was talking about computers, wizards that peep and mutter. Look at it now. It's going to be old school, guys. It's Joel's army. It's going to be a grassroots. Why? Yeah, I'm on YouTube. Yeah, I'm doing all this. I don't even like it. It's aggravating, the censorship, the just demonic stuff that's behind it. Even if none of that, you want to separate and say none of that's true about the election and they didn't interfere with it. And everybody's barking about for four years, all we heard about Russian collusion, what about domestic? But... The censorship was also a part of it. Huge part of it. God, but what I'm saying is, if we focus on the, the 
sin like they did when that woman that was caught in adultery and what the law said and just stoned them to death. Are we going to look to the cross? His righteousness. The beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Are we going to look at the dirt? Plenty of it, of course. But when we focus on that, that's what the enemy wants, that distraction, that flood, that wears out with the same trash. Guys, I, one time me and my wife were talking, I was like, man, honey, I said, uh, sometimes in the stuff that I have to do, I have to go to the, to the, to the dump, the city dump. And I get to the, you drive up this big hill and it's just trucks, you know, bulldozers and trucks and just people, every, you know, a lot of people everywhere. Busy place. Do a 360, trash everywhere. Stinky, dirty diapers and bags and just trash. Whichever direction you turn. Well, that's what the enemy's trying to do with us. Wear us out with this garbage. We should be done with that because we're letting it get into here so I can get into here. And then we start spitting out some of the same stuff. I'm going to stick with the Bible. My word won't go out void. Accomplish that which I sent it out to do. That standard of righteousness, holiness, truth. How are we going to be the light of the world when we're just as dark as them? And so I'm right. You know, I'm not accusing anybody of anything I'm saying. We can't let the pendulum swing the other way and get swallowed up in the flood of the enemy. We have to be that light. And I'm not talking about compromise either, guys. Sometimes it's a little dirty and sometimes you have to do things you don't necessarily understand and work with different people. But if you're not praying about it and seeking God for his direction, you're going to mess it up. We all are. That's what he's doing. He's, one of my messages is he doesn't want our wealth and fame, but he wants our guilt and shame. He wants those ugliest, dirtiest spots in our hearts. Those are rooms where we won't even go. It's like a nuclear concrete bunker that we built and locked up. Oh, we've all got them, guys. Some worse than others are farther along. Some are so buried. You don't even think it's sin anymore. That was one of the things the Lord told me. He, that's where he wants to go, guys. Why? How's he going to set us free? If we've got things buried in our heart. Where did it start from? Because we didn't renew our mind. Why didn't we renew our mind? Because we were not praying, seeking him. I'm not talking about, you know, you should, the... the like the Catholic Church does, stand by on knee, you know, the, whatever those things are that you nail on. I'm, I'm not necessarily picking on any one denomination either. I'm talking about, are you really, what's your relationship with him? Are you really seeking him? Are you really listening? This is not, this is the real deal, guys. It's like, Troy Aikman, man, he was, don't you think he knows a little bit about football? Yes, he does. He was a smart guy. He knew all about it. Commentator, and he's on talking, and he's a good commentator, and he's a good player. Won two Super Bowls, of course. But all of a sudden, game time, and everybody kind of, the whole thing changes. It's game time, guys. It's the real deal. No more. Sitting on the sidelines on the fence. But you're not going to get it. With fake, false, flood, 
pick one. News, the internet, people. Man, it's time to lay aside all that. And you know what the beauty of the cross is? John 3, 16, it's for all. For God's loved all the world. He can talk to any of us if we just want to. Let's talk to all of us in the cool of the day and the enemy is trying to deceive like a flood. But he starts out small, but it's like he wants to start breaking into that 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 righteousness, that wall down, that standard. He wants to try to chip and chip and weasel in. What did he do in the Garden of Eden? Snuck in. Oh man, did God really say that? So many things God really told, told me and showed me. You know what? I could name a bunch of names, more than one. I'm not trying to do this to be some kind of prophetic, probably not the right term, but guru or whatever, you know, it's like, no, I'm not. It's, but I'm just, what do you want me to say? God, when, how, where, why? I'm asking him all the time, guys. Do I get it right? 90, whatever, very high percentage, yes. But I miss it sometimes. So I'm tempted to bring it back to the Lord. Keep it ever before him. It's the beauty of the cross. It's the beauty of coming boldly before the throne of grace and mercy. That's the, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. Guys, we're not going to win this bat, these battles. They're barking. Unless if God tells you something, unless he's speaking, unless if he hears his oracle in his mouth, yes, some of those are going to be won. And there is some people that are doing that and need to. But it's going to be one with the direction that he gives us. And you're not going to get direction by listening to the flood. Looking at the damage, the destruction, the garbage, the trash. You can even smell it, feel it, taste it. It's real. I get it. But it doesn't have to be us. That's why he says, separate yourselves, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. Love you guys, but when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. So are we going to, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord? Or are we going to serve and bow down to CNN and all this election garbage mess that's really too past twisted that's why I said you know I, I get it there's some people that really do believe in that and they, they, they really firmly believe that they that there wasn't nothing going on and there's some that are just you know I'm not into the conspiracy theories either guys I'm into what does Jesus say about it it's going to come out trust me because he says trust in the Lord with all your heart and not in your understanding that was one of my messages. Our understanding, and guys, we're still trying to figure out who shot JFK. That's how smart and brilliant we are. Ask anybody. Very, I don't know, maybe six, eight, ten different theories, stories, or whatever. It spent, Congress spent tons of money. To, what was the Warren Report? 238, 298 pages. It was a lot of pages. <clears throat> People still don't believe it. If you brought it up, they'll still argue about it. <clears throat> How long ago was that, guys? 60 years ago. Long time. Over 60. <clears throat> long time ago. So, it's time to renew your mind. You're not going to renew your mind when it's polluted and diluted and, 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 you're, and you're, you're drowning in the flood. Man, just drive down the street, everything's flashing and billboards and <laughs> overload with information. Turn this computer off. Turn off your cell phone. Turn off everything that beeps, wizards, that peep and mutter. Turn it off. Get along with God. 
Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. Because the answer is not coming up from somewhere else. Love you guys. I got to do the same thing, guys. Land with this. Long story, but lost someone that I loved. A lot. And I was hurt. Years ago, and I said, I told God, I said, God, I'm really hurt. And it was very painful, of course. It always is. Separation of death is always painful. We all have to go through it. And it was just in the grieving process, but I was like, I'm trying, I said, God, I'm trying. It was a, there were some wrinkles to it, but I was like, God, I'm trying not to be mad at you, but I am. It wasn't his fault, of course, but, you know, that was my mentality at the time, okay? And I said, I so I barked at him. I said, God, are you even really listening? Because it hurt. Two days, guys. Nothing from the Lord. And I was praying some, but I call it complaining too, you know. Sometimes we just, we say we're praying and we're just bringing complaints to the Lord. <laughs> Take a number, you know. <sighs> Two days. I got my answer. You know what my answer was? No, are you really listening to me? Talk about a little bit more painful, a little bit deeper, and a little bit more. Okay, God. What do I do? He said, I always go to my word. He started giving me scriptures that co correlated to it exactly what I needed. Period of time, and just the healing process started. But it was through his word. Spoken living word. Are you using your Bible, guys? Are you using your prayer life, guys? Are you communicating with the with the, with the Father, Jesus, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Word? Or are you turning on something that's convenient that you can just? It's almost like a drug addict, guys. Honestly, some people are just so addicted to this stuff. And they're just laser focused on, you know. Of course, if you open a bag of old trash, you're going to find a can, a can of used food. Not that many people use cans anymore. So it'd be a box from the microwave. Whatever. An empty cereal box. Whatever. You know, some stinky food, dirty diapers. Garbage. Every bag you look in is going to be garbage. What are we picking up? Or are we laying it aside? Bring it before the Lord in prayer and supplication. That's why it says, be anxious for nothing. But bring before the Lord in prayer and supplication. And in the peace that passes all understanding. He'll give us the peace that passes all understanding. But what does it say right after that? He'll guard your heart, your mind. That's the standard, guys. That's what he wants to do. Put these on or take them off. But he wants us to see clearly. And we're not going to in our mind. Because our mind is going to be looking for that quick fix. That's how the world is. Fast food, drive in. That's what we want, the drive in gospel. <laughs> Eat Burger King, guys. Love you. I got to do the same thing, guys. This is not. Hey, you do this, and I'll do something else. Message. Love you guys. A lot. Um, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. And that standard is righteousness, holiness, purity. Not the trash. Not the flood of the dump. Love you guys. Love you guys a lot.